Resonant converters use resonant circuits with combination of capacitors and inductors. These converters reduce the switching losses and switching noise with the help of soft switching. So we can mainly use those in high power applications. This time we'll see what is a resonant converter made of, how does it work and what are its advantages and disadvantages. So let's start. So far we saw the normal power electronic switching converters with different isolated and non-isolated topologies. But when we add resonant circuits to those, it changes the whole lookout of the power electronic converter. A resonant converter consists of three sectors. A switching network, resonant tank or resonant circuit and rectify network. So resonant converter is a type of a DC to DC converter. The first block is switching network. It is also known as DC to AC converter which generates a pulsating voltage or current from a DC source with specific switching frequency. This block is basically a primary side of the isolated converters like flyback or harbridge converters. This waveform will be in the form of a square wave. Next the resonant tank is a two port network formed by inductors and capacitors which modulates their gain amplitude by changing the pulsating signal frequency. This converter can work in the range of megahertz. This resonant tank smooths out the square wave power signal which is being fed to the rectifier and it is very helpful for soft switching of the switching elements. Well, what is soft switching? That thing we'll see in detail in future videos. In some switching network and rectify network combinations, we add a DC blocking capacitor to maintain the inductor volt second balance, that is to avoid the saturation of the transformer. After this, the resonant tank provides the signal to the rectifier which converts AC voltage signal into DC. And this is the basic block diagram of a resonant converter. These converters are widely used in servers, telecoms and high power consumer electronics. The resonant converters provide high efficiency at high power. Also the overall size of the converter decreases. Additionally, in the case of isolated power converters, we can utilize transformer magnetizing and leakage inductors as two resonant elements in the switching converter, which helps for low component count and cost. Well, how does this actually work? A simple and commonly used analysis method for resonant converters is fundamental harmonic analysis, also known as first harmonic approximation. We must have heard about the terms such as first harmonic, third harmonic and fifth harmonic while studying the AC signals in power electronics. A real world AC wave has multiple harmonics and its fundamental frequency is the actual noiseless AC wave. When we get the AC wave from the switching circuit of the DC to DC converter, it is a square wave having sharp edges with multiple harmonics. This resonant converter basically filters out all the other harmonics present in the signal and tries to deliver the first harmonic at the output. If you are getting the pulsating AC signal from an inverter with the voltage as V in, then the fundamental harmonic of the square wave would be in the sine wave of magnitude 4 V in upon pi. The AC signal coming from the resonant converter is fed to a transformer in case of an isolated DC to DC converter and then it gets filtered out from the rectifier very easily. Basically there are two types of resonant circuits depending on their topology which are parallel and series resonant circuits. At the resonant frequency, parallel resonant circuits have effectively infinite impedance whereas series resonant circuits exhibit zero impedance. Because the capacitor and inductor both are frequency dependent resistors, the impedance changes as per the signal frequency which is given by these formula. Well, due to this, there is some difference between the input 
and output signal of the resonant converter. Because of that, there is always some energy loss in the resonant circuit and it is represented by a parameter called quality factor. A high quality factor indicates a low rate of energy loss and therefore that would be a preferable resonant circuit for the converter. But if you use the resonant circuits with a high quality factor and the frequency of the operation even slightly deviates from the resonant frequency, it might not go into resonance or they might require a longer period of time to become stable. In the case of resonant inverters, Q factor of a resonant circuit varies with the load impedance. There are different type of resonant circuits used in the resonant converter which we'll see in the future video with their response. Beyond the relationship between voltage gain and resonant elements, it is also very important to understand the soft switching conditions of the resonant converters. Circulating current in a resonant converter is used to charge or discharge the parasitic capacitors of the switching elements during the switching dead time. It is a period where all the switches are turned off. To know more about the parasitic components of a MOSFET, you can check out this video. Hence, it is very important to ensure the circulating current is high enough and flows in the desired direction under the required operation region. In addition to that, enough dead time must be provided for that converter. Well, there are some limitations of this resonant converter. As there is a dependency on the load, it is not comfortable with a wide range of input voltage and load variation. Also, even if there is no load connected to the circuit, a significant amount of current may circulate through the tank elements, which leads to poor efficiency at lighter loads. And these considerations increase conduction losses of the switching elements. And finally, Controlling such a circuit is quite complex because of the soft switching, resonant circuit and their resonant frequencies. Well, that's all about the basics of resonant converters. I have added all the references related to these circuits in the description. If you have any query, you can ask me in the comment section or email me. Hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. And finally, thank you so much for watching this video.